You're listening to Connections on Radio IDL. I'm Ken Busby, your host. Great to have you with us this week. As always, for the very best of the blues, we're going to have a little poetry focused on architecture. Yes, architecture. And why, you may ask, are we doing that? Well, because I'm very excited that we have a really cool interview with uh, Suzanne Fitzgerald Wallace and Sam Joyner. Uh, he, she is an author. Sam is a photographer. And uh, they've written a new book on Art Deco Tulsa. So it's a great book, a great guide to the beautiful Art Deco architecture in this great community of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so I thought it would be great to share that with our listening audience. So we'll get to that conversation in a minute. You're listening to Connections on Radio IDL. You're listening to Connections on Radio IDL. I'm Ken Busby, your host. Great to have you with us this week for an exciting interview. I am so stoked about this because we're going to be uh, visiting with Sam Joyner and Suzanne Wallace. I guess I should use your full name, Suzanne Fitzgerald Wallace, because uh, I know you like that, and I apologize. And and Sam Joyner is just Sam, right? You're right yes, That's correct. right. That's right. So we're so excited to have these two because they have a new book out, Art Deco Tulsa. And so uh, we're going to get into the book and, and really talk about that because that's what we're here for. But I want to start in case some of our listeners don't know exactly who you two are. I would always begin with the pretty lady, so we'll begin with Suzanne. Tell us a little bit about your background and what brought you to this moment to do this book. My background is actually Spanish and counseling and moved to Tulsa in 1982 with my new husband, Michael Wallace, who began writing about Route 66. Right, but and, and, and Michael met you when you were teaching Spanish, as I recall. That's correct. I was teaching Spanish. He was a student, and I never got to know my students during the time that we were going through the class. He would raise his hand every time I asked a question. It was He always gave me the wrong answer. <laughs> so he was memorable for that. He was memorable, and when he walked up to my table in the student union that summer, he asked if I remembered him, and I said yes. I gave him a D minus because I thought there was he was a Marine. I thought something was wrong. He came up to the table in the student union and told me he was going to be a writer, and I thought, oh, my goodness. So I got to know him after that. Um, we went our separate ways. We got back together. We moved to Tulsa in 1982. Mm -hmm. He did begin writing his many books, and um, especially a book about Route 66 mm -hmm. that put the road back on the map Absolutely. again. Absolutely. Did. And um, I had a public relations agency mm -hmm. for many years. My main client was Toyota. Yes. Um, and since I closed my agency eight, nine years ago. I've been working with Michael on various projects. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Steve Gerken suggested that somebody write a book at the History Press. He had mm -hmm. already published a book through History Press, Hidden Tulsa, and he suggested one about Oklahoma outlaws and Tulsa Art Deco. So okay. I chose to do Tulsa Art Deco. I'm awfully glad you did. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> and so then you decided, and you, well, you knew you were going to need great images because Art Deco, That's right. uh, while it needs great description, also needs great images. That's and so you connected with Sam Joyner. With Sam Joyner, who is a world-class photographer. <laughs> we got to be very good friends in the course of uh, exploring the city, and I'll let him tell you about that. Okay, Sam. And so let's have a little bit of your background, too. Well, as, as you know, I suppose everybody knows, I served on the federal bench as a federal judge for some 16 years, having retired, retired six years ago. But throughout that process, for at least the last 25 years, I've done a lot of what I would call fine art, black and white photography. I've participated in probably 25 workshops over a variety of weekends and weeks. Um, and have studied with 20 of the best photographers in the United That's States. Cool. So it was a great honor and a great opportunity, an opportunity for excitement uh, when Suzanne asked me to participate in this project mm -hmm. as a photographer. I've been honored and excited about that prospect ever since. And following her invitation some three years ago, we have spent 
uh, two years, at least nine months, roaming around the streets of Tulsa, <laughs> taking photographs. So we took over 500 photographs, 140 of which ended up in the book. So that's a pretty good percentage when you think about it. It is, yeah. If it, yeah, if you get that many good photographs mm-hmm. out of 500, you're doing pretty well. Tell me a little bit more though about the avocation, and now, of course, it's what it's really what you spend your time on is photography. What what got you excited about it? When you said you've been doing it for about twenty five years, do you know what it was? That I do just, know what it was. Uh-huh. I mean, it was pretty specific. I mean, it's sort of using the other side of the brain. Mm-hmm. I really wasn't enjoying as a private lawyer and as a judge the proper expression of the aesthetic. Sure. And um, so I was. Uh, Artist in a hurry, so to speak, and okay. photography fit into that pretty well. Mm-hmm. Very cool, mm-hmm. very cool. And so here we are now, with a, a with a new book. So let's talk about that book after we take a quick break, and we'll hear more about this wonderful new addition to the lexicon of Art Deco uh, style and aesthetic. You're listening to Connections on Radio IDL. <laughs> You're listening to Connections on Radio IDL. I'm Ken Busby, your host. Great to have you with us this week for what I am deeming one of my greatest moments in radio history, speaking to two absolutely fantastic people, Sam Joyner and Suzanne Fitzgerald Wallace, about a fantastic new book out on Art Deco Tulsa. And so I, I want to continue our conversation with um, with a, a I, I think I know the answer, but I want I want to hear it in your words. Why Art Deco and why now? Um, Art Deco because Tulsa in the early part of the 1900s had the highest density per capita of Art Deco in the country. It's right. It was known as Terracotta City. Mm-hmm. When, um, I guess it was in the 60s, 50s, 60s, they began to go in another direction, and some of the buildings were torn down, but many have remained, and um, they are magnificent. They are are a part of Tulsa that honestly could draw people from around the world to come into the city to see Art Deco. Mm -hmm. It's it's, um, a wonderful architecture. I love it. It is. It is. And I think you're right. The very fact that we have so much of it here uh, gives people another reason to make Tulsa a destination. Yes. We are not flyover country. We, we are, are not. not. The Why other way to get into Tulsa is on Route 66. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. We're going to hear a lot about Route 66 today, folks, too. So that's good. Since it's my passion, too, that's awesome. Yes. Uh, Sam, when you were when you were photographing uh, the 500 photographs and so forth, and then trying to select out what you would put into um, the book, what were there a couple of shots that you took that that were your absolute favorites? Not necessarily. The building itself, or, the, or, the, or what you capture, but just the very, the act of doing it, and so forth. It was like, wow, this! I'm so glad I captured this. Yeah, I think so. It's not too easy to to choose. As a matter of fact, um, you know, this you, you is can not give me a top five or top ten. It's okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I don't have you want me to show you. <laughs> yeah, well, hold on, or... close to the microphone so that everybody could see. <laughs> yes, That's absolutely. <laughs> you know, I sort of realized halfway through the project that part of my goal. Well, on page 19 of the book, Suzanne defines Art Deco. She describes it as exuberance, uh, splendor, beautiful, colorful, exotic. And it was my goal as a photographer to convey that exuberance, Mm -hmm. uh, that splendor in the camera for the purposes of the book. Sure. Um, uh, This is not a coffee table book unless your coffee table is very small. It would work in a small apartment. It would work it'd be, in a it'd small be great. apartment. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh-huh. But uh, I sort of realized that my goal was to reveal Art Deco as an art form. Mm-hmm. And the more you do that, the more you concentrate on possibly abstract images, uh, graphics, uh, images that rely more on the graphics and, in this case, the color, mm-hmm. than on the content. And, sure. Uh, so, for example... Immediately comes to mind is the ceiling on the Philcade. Oh, building. yes, yes. I mean, that's incredible. Uh, and 
we should celebrate the architects and the artisans that were able to create that work. I, I know we sometimes refer to it as Tulsa's Chrysler Building, yes. because it's just such an extraordinary it uh, zig zigzag, correct, yes. uh, style of Art Deco mm -hmm. uh, design. Yeah, just it is amazing. And it is one of those things, and I'm really hoping, and I'm sure you are too, that when people buy your book, that they will then go and visit the buildings themselves if they haven't to see these wonderful uh, sites and, yes. and experience them themselves. There's because a, there's nothing like it. There's a chart in the back of the book, as a matter Tell of fact. Tell us about the chart. And every building, every Art Deco building built here is listed okay. the date that it was built the style mm -hmm. the architect great the status if there's no mention that means it's still there otherwise you can read about whether it was demolished or not uh -huh. and the address uh -huh. so you can take the book in hand uh -huh. and head out all over the city that's cool yeah very cool oh that that's 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 a wonderful handy guide to have literally wow Worth the price of the book, just for the chart. Just for the chart. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, when you were, when you were uh, thinking about what you wanted to include, not just the photographs, but but in in the things that you wanted to convey, what were the most important aspects of of I've got to make sure this is told. I've got. To, I want to make sure people know about this. Was there? Oh. A couple of things. Okay, yeah, you're going on, huh? <laughs> I, you're nodding at me. I, um, when I was doing my research, um, became acquainted with Bruce Goff, mm -hmm. and I just fell in love with Bruce yes. Goff. Yes. All of his work. What a fantastic architect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I want people to know the role he played in Tulsa, some of the work that he did, including the um, controversial work on the Boston Avenue Methodist Church. I was going to say, I, I, I know you talk about that that's a little bit. That's in there. And that's good. Yes. We all know that Bruce Goff really did do it, though. He was the architect. He was and, the architect. And, and he designed it, but could not have come up with the original idea without Ada Robinson, right, the, right. his art teacher from high school. Right, right. The other building that Bruce Goff designed that I truly love is... Um, the Riverside Studio. Um, also known as Tulsa Spotlight Theater. Tulsa mm -hmm. Spotlight Theater, which at present, I mean, that is one of his earliest buildings. Mm -hmm. It is a historic part yes. of Tulsa, and it desperately needs to be refurbished. Absolutely. It's, I, it's, it's it, on my list of things that have to be done. It is wonderful, Tulsa. yes. Yeah, and it, the it story is. of... Uh, Patty Smith of uh, the whole story behind it. Mm -hmm. I've told the story in the book, and it's it's really an amazing story and one that again Tulsa should be very proud of. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's take a break there, and we'll get back to some more discussions of this. You're listening to to Suzanne Fitzgerald Wallace and Sam Joyner. This is Connections. I'm Ken Busby, your host, and we'll be right back. We're back with Connections on Radio IDL. I'm Ken Busby, your host. Great to have you with us this week, as always, for a really interesting conversation with Suzanne Fitzgerald Wallace and Sam Joyner about their new book, Art Deco Tulsa. And one of our listeners uh, called in, uh, Ken Bruning, don't mind sharing his name. He's a great supporter of downtown and Art Deco and, and all things uh, cultural in our community. And he had some specific questions, so I wanted to make sure that we got this covered because he wanted to know uh, where there might be some book signings coming, where he could get an autographed copy, uh, who's carrying your book, and uh, and those kinds of things. So this would be a good time to uh, to get those questions answered. So I bet you've got some more book signings coming up. We do. I'll tell you about a couple, and I will let Sam tell you. We have two coming up Saturday of this week. Saturday of this week, so that would be the... Ninth. Ninth, yes. Uh, one at Snow Goose oh, in Snow Goose Utica Square. Square from 11 in the morning until 1 in the afternoon. Okay, right over the lunch hour. Perfect. And then we go to Magic City Bookstore in the, the Tulsa, Tulsa Arts, Arts District, District uh -huh. uh, at 2 o'clock and stay there until whenever people aren't Ooh. there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll sign okay. books. And we'll sign books. And people can have a glass of wine while we're people there. A cup of a really good coffee. That yes, would be a fun yes. way to spend an afternoon, too. Yes. Now Sam and Sam, you got a couple others? Well, actually, we have been informed that 
This book is the second bestseller at Magic City Bookstore. Congratulations. Just under Killers of the Flower Moon. Mm, holy cow, that's <laughs> yeah. fantastic. Yeah, so Congratulations. We're looking, looking yeah. forward to that uh, signing there this, this Saturday. This Saturday. And there'll yeah, be a presentation great. as well to oh, discuss good. the aspects of the book. Oh, good. Uh, up prior to this time, we've had signings at the Philbrook Museum, the right. Tulsa Historical, Historical Society, Tecopolis, and actually there was an event at Southern Hills. That's well. nice. So We're just getting around all over. Then we go to Barnes & Noble in uh, June 16th of this year. That's okay. right. Okay. Yes. Um, so uh, you mentioned Barnes & Noble, so I'm assuming this book is also available online. It's available online. Okay, cool. We do encourage you to visit the various places in Tulsa where the book is on sale, Philbrook. Because they can't get it signed online. No, they and cannot. And we need to have it autographed by you, oh, too. Yes. So, Absolutely. So you have to visit one of your local local stops. Yes. Cool, cool. Um, so when you have a book like this, and, and, pe- and you're making presentations and people are coming up and getting signed, you've done several already, have you had... Um, an interesting question asked of you that made you either stop and ponder or say, oh, yeah, that, the answer to that's in the book, or, gosh, I didn't even know about that, or or what an interesting, I don't know, people, people know interesting things sometimes, and they will often try not to stump people necessarily, but just say, hey, I know this aspect about Art Deco, and I just wonder if you've been hearing any conversations uh, during your signings that were interesting. or Well, um the cover of the book includes a, a design mm-hmm. that is very interesting that we've been asked about, and the um, the actual design was was created um, of the goddess of oil back before yes. World War Two, mm-hmm. and this was supposed to be the entry into the exposition. Square ex- Expo Square, but that changed after oh, the, the old war. IPE building. IPE sure. building. Sure. Now the actually interesting thing is that that statuette is down at Decapolis, uh-huh. and the owner William Franklin's grandmother posed for that. The mom. Almost. I how many years ago? That's all in the book. The story's in the book. Okay. Yeah. And um, so that's that's a real interesting aspect of the book that people have asked about that it's mm-hmm. been fun to tell them. Neat. Sam? Well, I have to add the postscript that she posed, all right, she posed in the nude. <laughs> and there was uh-huh. somebody stationed at the door throughout to make sure there was no monkey business. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes. How, my, how times have changed. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you ask if anybody asked any curious questions. Uh-huh. Well, there was the one fellow that wanted to know if Art Deco was a man's name. Yes. Oh, now that's unusual. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I stole that from Suzanne. Yes. Her joke, but I was afraid she was going to leave it out. Yeah, that's in That's there. a good one. The, the fellow said he always thought that it was the name of a a fellow in, I don't remember. Like an architect, maybe, yeah. or something? Arthur, Arthur Decker. Arthur. Wow. That's fascinating. So, okay, so, you, so you've done the book, and, 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 and you've covered a lot of things. Is there anything not in the book that you wish had been, or is that, is that going to lead to uh, the, the the next book? Okay. Oh, uh, well, you want to start on that? Or I'll you? let you start on that. Well, I don't think we deal with residential aspects of okay. our deco too heavily in this book, and, mm-hmm. and there may be further opportunity for that. You know, I'm not sure that she had, well, at the time, maybe the motivation to get into it in any depth. But Art Deco had a pretty short-lived existence as an architectural art form. True, true. But it really has very deep roots. I mean, if you go back to the Greeks, um, mm-hmm. you find the same harmony, proportion, balance, and beauty in Art Deco as the Greeks celebrated. Good point. Okay. And if you want to go back further, you can go back to the ancient Egyptians. And uh, there's a lot of those Egyptian design elements in Art mm-hmm, Deco, mm-hmm. Uh, especially in the zigzag aspects. So, oh, absolutely. Uh, a real curious question is, what happened to Art Deco? Mm-hmm. Why did it die? And, and what's the answer to that question? Uh, that 
answer is everybody's going to argue or dispute it. Sure. I think probably it's because historically we became very efficient. Well, the Baha and Walter Gropius, this place in mm-hmm. Germany, mm-hmm. emphasized the style design of efficiency, streamlines, mm-hmm. and no wasted space, no wasted money. And so the ornamentation reflected by Art Deco just was not to be afforded and was not popular. You know, they're always mm-hmm. ready to move on, people. Sure. Architectural money. You know, we talk about that architecture should, uh, a lot of people do, should be of the moment. So whatever this this moment is, whatever the 21st century produces, that's the architecture now. And sometimes people try to replicate an Art Deco style. And I always tell folks that you really can't. The, 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 the oil money, the, the money that went into that created something that was just truly unique, and I use that word very carefully, but for that time. But do you think... As you look at as you look at how uh, architectures evolved over time, do you think we'll go back to, or, or we we could cycle back to, a, an Art Deco ish style again, where ornamentation and so forth is more um, prevalent? Well, there, um, I Myers Dern Harley Davidson on Peoria um is, is we could consider that an echo of deco so to speak mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if you go in and you look at the design and reba the owner mm-hmm. explained to that to a great extent she wanted windows up high on the wall for the light to come in on the motorcycles inside the store sure. that was one of their reasoning um i think that aspects of art deco can come back they should um, it, it seems like there are some homes, didn't you, Sam? Didn't you know of somebody that was building or thinking of building an Art Deco home? They planned to build it and then mm-hmm. decided that they didn't want to at this time in their life. But they hired an architect and got the full, complete drawings for a residence with an Art Deco emphasis. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. I'm, I'm glad to see people thinking about it. One of the things I was thinking about, even though uh, Frank Lloyd Wright is not uh, an Art Deco architect really well maybe some aspects might be i guess but not really but what i was thinking about was going back to uh plans of his that that Mm -hmm. his foundation taliesin has that somebody could take those today and build those yes and i i sort of wonder if some of that might happen like with bruce goff and others especially talking about residential um that that might happen at some point i thought wouldn't it be cool if people did some of that it would be think about the price tower in in bartlesville Mm -hmm. And it's the one skyscraper of that was designed by Frank Lloyd that was ever mm-hmm. built. It's like, but he designed others. Wouldn't it be cool if somebody who would want to do that and well, build West a skyscraper? West Hope is in this book. There you, you mentioned go. West Hope. I'm yes. glad you did. Absolutely. And the photograph. Yes, right. and the photograph. I ask an architect that same question, you know, could we do something currently with Art Deco? And he said, well, if you did, you couldn't call it Art Deco. Because that right. was the time and the period in history. I, I agree with You'd that. have to call it Art Deco Nouveau. Mm-hmm. That could be fun. So, then yeah, that, that no, he agreed f- with what you just said. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. cool. That makes me happy. Mm-hmm. But there's, 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 if people short it to Art Nouveau, then we'll, then we'll confuse people again, too. That's so true. That, wouldn't, that wouldn't be good. But uh, Art Deco Redux or something. That's um, right. Or we could call it Arthur Deco. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and really give credit to the man that was really responsible, that so few know that, that story. so few know That's about right. I, I, I see a novel in that one. So let's, let's take one more break, and then we'll come back and finish up our time together uh, with Michael and Suzanne. Michael and Suzanne, there I go. With Sa- Michael, Suzanne, Sam, it's all good. It's all good. I see Suzanne, I think, and you mentioned Route 66 a couple of times, so therefore I have to think about Michael Wallace some. Yeah, yes. You just have to. Yes. He's ever-present. He... <laughs> He's ever present, isn't he, Sam? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. I'm, I'm the present. I'm the present, yes. Uh huh. And, and we'll leave it at that for the moment. So you're listening to Connections on Radio IDL. You're listening to Connections on Radio IDL. I'm Ken Busby, your host. Great to have you with us for our conversation with Suzanne Fitzgerald Wallace and Sam Joyner. And um, a forward by Michael Wallace. I think that was what was also in my mind. Um, so, uh, as we as we finish up our time together, I want to talk about a couple of things. But you know, so th- when you think about it now, visiting a local uh, bookstore, uh, especially where you're doing a signing or a local store where you're doing a signing, this is a chance for the audience 
to get a first edition and a signed first edition. So, you know, in the next two or three years, this thing's going to double, triple, quadruple in value. Absolutely. Right now you can buy it for $22. 22 even? A oh, twenty one ninety. Ninety five. Nine or ninety nine. Twenty one dollars and ninety nine cents. That is a tax. bargain. It is a bargain. That's well, a bargain. we should note the book is in second printing. Yes, okay. and several people have sold out. I mean, Philbrook sold purveyors out. Have sold have out. already sold out. Great. Okay, and, and had and to order more. Books. Yes. All right. So yes. see already. Already, that's fantastic. The Coppola's had to reorder. Yes. Okay, there we go. So first editions already selling out. You better get your copy while you can. Get it while you and, can. And get it while you can. We've got two um, two signings this weekend. Yes. Hit them one more time for me. This weekend, Saturday, uh, from 11 to 1, mm-hmm. uh, noon hour at Utica Square. At the Snow Goose. At the Snow we Goose. We love Jan. She does a great Jan job. Jan does a great job. And then Magic City Books. Tulsa Art District at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock There'll on. be a presentation okay. and then book signing. Is the presentation at 2? Yes. Okay. Just so people know when they, yes. they should come at the 2 o'clock if they want to yes. hear the presentation. Okay. Great. Exactly. Anything else that we should know, Sam? Uh, we just appreciate the opportunity to be here and visit about well, our yes. favorite subject right yes. now. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Our favorite subject right now until, <laughs> until, you know, until, until tomorrow. With, yeah. uh, until we come up with the next great idea. No, it's been a lot of fun. And thank you both for uh, wanting to be on Connections and for doing this for me and with us. Um, we, our whole point of Connections is to let people know about great things happening in the community and connecting people with passion. So uh, this has been great. So thank you so much for your time. Wish you much continued success with the book. And we'll look forward to the next one mm-hmm. and more conversations. You're listening to Connections on Radio IDL. I'm Ken Busby, your host, and we'll see you next week.